Good morning. This morning's verse is from the book of John. It's John 1, 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. Now this verse is really, really interesting because as I read it at first, it just kind of spoke the obvious to me. The word, the word being God, the word became flesh in the form of Jesus and dwelt among us. And during that time, we saw his glory. We being the people of the time, they got to walk with him. They got to talk with him. They got to listen to him. They got to see how he interacted with people. And glory as only, as the only, wait a minute, glory as of the only son of the father. And that's something that, that is very impactful. I actually heard this recently where it's not like God sent one of his sons. He sent the only son. And way back in the Old Testament, we find that a covenant could only happen, but the sealing of the covenant only happened through the shed of blood. And that's why there were sacrifices in the Old Testament. And as we look at this, the Son of God, Jesus, was sent to earth in the flesh, the Word becoming flesh, coming to earth to dwell among us, to be sacrificed for us, the one and only Son of God. Now, that's not to say that we look at any of our children as being more or less valuable than the others, but God only had one, and he sent him to be sacrificed for us. And I think about that, one cross plus three nails, forgiven. That's kind of what this, this story is all about. It's the story of love. The, the Bible is the story of love, from sacrifice all the way through God always looking after us. But what I love in this verse is the very end, where it says that the Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, when I read these words numerous times previously, when I come across this verse, grace and truth, yep, he was grace, he was truth. But what I actually dug in and what I saw this morning was a little bit different than that. And it could be because of current events and things that I've seen and, and other, um, uh, other talks that I've heard recently. And this isn't the type of grace that we talk about when we're talking about miscongeniality. We're not talking about, you know, a nice transition and spoke well and everything else. And, and granted, I'm fairly certain that Jesus did not appear in the form of Jerry Lewis. So there was a certain grace in, his, in, in the way he walked and the way he talked. But it was the grace that we're referring to here is grace in the form of mercies and graces. And... At least that's, that's what I'm reading in it today. So when we look at the difference between mercy and grace, mercy is not giving us what we do deserve. So God had every right to, beyond the fact that he's God, he had the right to condemn us to eternity in hell, eternity separated from him because of the things that we had done. The payment for our sin was death, but he had mercy on us and he forgave us. He didn't give us what we were due. Grace, on the other hand, is the opposite. It is giving us the things that we are not worthy of. So he gave us eternal salvation instead of eternal condensation. The mercy was not sending us to eternal condensation. The grace is actually bringing us to heaven. And they're a little bit different. That was recently described to me, and I finally get the difference between the two. And what we're seeing here is grace, and I think it's a combination of mercy and grace. But here, John uses grace and truth. So what is the truth? God and Jesus are the way, the truth, and the life. So the truth, the truth, when we read the Bible, we hear truth. And sometimes they hurt because they can sound condemning. And in fact, they are, but they're not meant to condemn as much as they're meant to educate for us to learn. And when I've read the Bible and I, or I go to a sermon or a talk and I hear something that makes me angry, Typically what happens is it's something inside of me. It's not like it's not like God is changing the word to condemn me. No, he's he's speaking the word to teach me so that I can grow closer to him because God wants us close to him. That was his, that was his grand design. And it's a beautiful design. There's so much more that I could go into that that I pondered this morning on this verse, but I love the fact that here we see the and I'll use the word, I'll use the word, um, I'll use the word condemning, where we see that, that disapproval. The truth says, I, God, disapprove of this aspect of your life, Dax. But this word right before it remind me, reminds me that not only is he saying, I disapprove of what you're doing, Dax, but he's also saying, 
I have graces for you. I accept who you are and forgive you despite who you are. And I never saw that in these three words, grace and truth. He has graces, forgiveness for the things that I have done wrong, but he speaks the truth to show me where those things are. And at that point, I have a choice. I can get mad. I can get angry. I can ignore um, verses and, and phrases and chapters and even whole books of the Bible saying that they don't apply anymore, that it's a whole new world out here and God doesn't know. Or I can recognize that the, that the word, God's word, not the word God in the top sentence here, but, but God's word is being misused for self-centeredness in today's world. And that's what we see, where we see people justifying and saying, oh, well, my God says this. No, your God doesn't say that. Our God said this. You may be interpreting it differently. And in fact, I may be interpreting it differently. Again, I've mentioned a number of times, I'm not a theologian, but God tells us to be in his word. And that's what I'm trying to do. So I, I take the verse, whatever it may be, and I see how it speaks to me in, those, in, in that day. And some days it teaches me something and enlightens me. And other days it reveals something inside of me. But isn't it interesting that God's living word can be used to teach and it can be used to correct. Granted, both are, are forms of teaching, but it is like no other piece of literature in history in the fact that it actually speaks to us in our lives more so than a history book, more so than a fiction book. The Bible actually speaks to the Holy Spirit and to our soul to keep us aligned with God should, should we so choose to do that. So his graces and his truth. Again, John 1, 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Father God, thank you so, so much for having your word in such a way that I can read it and I can think about it and you can speak to me through it so that I can apply it, so that I can see where I'm falling down and where I am failing. And then Lord, in this same sentence, you remind me that despite my failures, you love me. And despite my failures and imperfections, inequities and transgressions, you love me anyway, so much so that you sacrifice your one and only son, Jesus, so that I could spend eternity with you. So that each and every one of us who read your word and understand what you are saying, see the message that you love us despite the fact that we do things that hurt you. Father God, please forgive us again for the things that we've done in error Thank you so much for your mercy and your grace. And thank you for the truth that you speak in your son Jesus' holy name. Amen. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. Your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. Like the sound of a symphony in my ears. Like hope. Father God, thank you for that. I pray that you have a fantastic, blessed day. And I hope that you can listen to this verse a little bit differently. And you can see that the truth that we hear in church or in the Bible, and the truth that may feel cutting, is followed by grace and mercy that is full of God's never-ending, everlasting, perfect love. God bless you. Have a fantastic day. We'll see you soon.